When this sewage worker was tasked with solving a sewer clog, he expected a simple, routine job. Sewage clogs happened constantly, and he got rid of them often. But when he drained the water and saw this blockage, he turned pale instantly. He had no choice. He had to call the police. Worker drains sewer and sees this, calls the police when he realizes what it is. Stewart worked for one of the largest sewer draining companies in town. They were mostly busy with routine jobs that affected a couple of houses. But when he received reports of entire city blocks being pestered by block drains, he had no choice but to check underground. But he never could have expected this outcome. His employer sent Stewart down into the sewers by himself to see what caused this situation. They went down into the city's underground pipe system about once every month, so Stewart knew the tunnel system well. He set out on his mission with some gear on hand and an industrial flashlight accompanying him. The first part of the pipe system seemed normal. There was some access to water there, but nothing that could alarm the upstairs neighborhoods all that much. But when Stewart ventured deeper, this blockage's source became clearer. Water and other fluids were piled up higher than he had ever seen before. What the hell? Stewart knew what he had to do. He ran back to his truck and used the extraction hose he brought to drain all this excess water away, not knowing that this would reveal a shocking hidden secret. As the water levels slowly dropped, the source of the blockage quickly showed its ugly head. A sizable greenish obstacle was clogging up one of the main tubes. Stewart looked at the object with utter confusion as he tried to get the water level down as quickly as possible. The object seemed plastic in nature, like something people used for their inflatable pools. What is that thing? Stewart didn't fully know what he was looking at at that point. But somehow, the enormous object seemed familiar to him. The object was wedged in there pretty tightly that much he could deduct because not a single drop of water could get past it. This did not get here by accident, he told himself. Stewart already assumed that people must have tucked the giant balloon-like object in there. But the confused sewage worker still had no idea why someone would do that. Why would someone do this? After about 30 additional minutes, the water finally drained fully. And that's when Stewart realized what it was. A light bulb went off inside Stewart's mind. Of course, I know what this is, he spoke almost excitedly. It was an inflatable expansion device used for repairing broken parts of sewage pipes. The pressure against the tunnel walls would prevent collapses during essential repairs. But there was one big problem with this discovery. Stewart's company owned almost all of these devices. They were all in their warehouse because none were currently in use. So, the confused sewage worker immediately checked their system database. On it, he could also check the stock of all rival companies. And that's when a shiver went down his spine. Not a single inflation device was in use in the entire town. And according to their database, no planned repair was ordered anywhere. Things were not adding up. And the more Stewart thought about it, the more suspicious he got. He made another assumption then and there, one with large consequences. What if this particular expansion unit isn't used to support broken pipes? What if it was used to keep water and perhaps even unwanted people out? With this thought in mind, Stewart's nerves started growing even more. He didn't want to be down there by himself anymore. He needed to call the police. The phone operator was intrigued and surprised by Stewart's call for help and immediately agreed this situation needed to be investigated. He would send the three nearest officers to Stewart's location. They will arrive shortly. The sewage worker hurried back to meet them, happy the police took this situation as seriously as he was. Officers Stevens, Waddle, and Santiago were already waiting on him when Stewart arrived at his truck. The sewage worker didn't hesitate and told the officers to follow him. As Stewart guided them down, he explained the situation, but the officers were still surprised to see the cause of the blockage and immediately started their investigation. It didn't take long for the officers to agree the situation was weird. This was clearly placed here by someone for some reason. We should try to remove it, Officer Stevens, whose name was Tricia, said. She took the lead in the situation and asked Stewart if that was possible, considering he was the expert. 
Some unknown factors were at play because they didn't know when the device was placed or for what reason. Those were also why Stewart agreed that the blockage needed to be removed. We need to be careful because there could be a lot of water built up behind it, he said, agreeing on the plan. Stewart and the officers carefully tried to loosen the device. It was a meticulous and time-consuming task, but slowly, they made some progress. When there was a big enough gap, Stewart instructed the officers to halt and use the device to measure the water pressure. That's odd, Stewart said when he saw the readings. What's odd? Trisha asked with a mixture of confusion and worry in her voice. The sewage worker explained the water pressure on the other side of the blockage was very low. It should be the opposite. There was only one explanation for this. There are more blockades, Stewart said, his voice drenched in disbelief. Surprised by this discovery, the group stood in silence, trying to process the situation. Then Officer Waddle spoke. I can only think of one reason someone would put up multiple blockades. They want to dry out a specific area in these sewers. Everyone stared at each other as they realized they stumbled onto something big. We need to find out what is going on and who is behind this, Trisha said determinedly, and the other officers nodded. Then she turned toward Stewart, asking for his help. We could use your expertise. He didn't hesitate as he wanted to know what was going on and agreed to act as their guide. The group removed the inflatable blockade as fast as possible and ventured into the sewer system, and as they expected, they were soon met by another blockade. Stewart measured the water pressure behind the obstacle, and it was very low. So, to save some time, Trisha punctured it to deflate it. Under Stewart's guidance, the group ventured further and further, and eventually, something changed. They kept hitting blockades, but they were set up at junctions. They were blocking one way, but leaving the other open. The group agreed it was the best choice to follow the open pipes and where they lead. As the journey progressed, Stewart noticed the pipes were getting cleaner and drier as they walked. It made him realize the blockades must have been set up for a while, but they were also getting closer to whatever they were heading. He was about to tell the officers these thoughts when the sound suddenly started. Stewart's body froze when he heard them, and he looked at the officers with fright in his eyes. The officers tried to pinpoint where the noise was coming from, but it was reflected by the pipes, which made it impossible. The strange sounds gave the situation an eerie feeling, and Stewart became anxious and hesitant. Stewart was relieved to see Trisha take out her walkie-talkie and radio for backup, but there's no signal down here. Looks like we're on our own, she said. The sewage worker didn't feel comfortable with that thought as they clearly stumbled upon something big, and they would soon discover how right he was. I can get you a signal, he said, hoping they would still call for backup. If he remembered correctly, there was a manhole nearby. The female officer gestured for him to show them the way, but as they continued their journey, the ominous sounds only seemed to get louder. What was going on down here? We're almost there, Stewart said with a slight tremble in his voice. The eerie noise was getting on his nerves, and he started to regret agreeing to guide the officers. But as they turned the corner, the group suddenly halted and stared at the incredible sight before them. What the, Stewart mumbled. The sewer pipe suddenly widened into a vast and spacious chamber, but that wasn't the surprising part. Stewart knew about the room as they had to cross it to get to the manhole. The surprising part was that he and the officers were staring at a chamber filled with high-end technology. This wasn't here before, Stewart whispered, stating the obvious. Hesitant and carefully, the group entered the chamber. Their eyes were wide open as they looked around and noticed that electrical wires were broken open and connected to the devices. Whoever did this was deriving power from the buildings above ground. The group moved through the chamber, looking closely at all the technology. What is this place? Officer Santiago whispered, astonishment hearable in his voice. The place was filled with monitors showing city camera footage and listening devices. This is where the sounds are coming from, Stewart gestured as he stood before a tower of monitors. It's some sort of observation, post, Trisha said in disbelief when she arrived beside Stewart. The discovery floored the group. 
They all knew the blockades were placed for a reason, but none expected it to be for this. Who would do this and why? The officers immediately started looking for answers. Someone wouldn't do this with good intentions, so we need to figure out who is behind this and what their plans are before they can act on them, Tricia said before assigning everyone a quarter of the room to search. Stewart listened obediently and hurried to find clues so he could get out of there. Look at this! Officer Waddle suddenly exclaimed after a few minutes. Within no time, the entire group surrounded the desk Waddle was standing at. A small monitor displayed city footage, but everyone ignored it as they looked at the documents and files lying out in the open. No way, Trisha mumbled. Stewart watched Trisha quickly scan the files, and her eyes widened with each page she turned. It all makes sense now, Trisha whispered, disbelief drenched in her voice. But she quickly recovered and returned to her leadership role. This is an incredible discovery. It's vital we call for backup right away, she said. She grabbed her portable phone and was glad she had a signal, probably due to all the wiring gathered in this area. But before she could send a message, the group suddenly heard footsteps approaching quickly. If those people noticed the group's presence, they would flee and never be caught. They had to hide. Stuart and Trisha hurry behind one of the monitor towers and hold their breath. Stewart heard the cop quickly signal three times with her radio and then turn it off. Right then, a group of seven people entered the chamber, and Stewart prayed they had not heard or noticed them. The group entered the chamber from the other side, from where Stewart and the officer had come, so they passed very close by the stack of monitors Stewart and Tricia were hiding behind. The sewage worker was startled when one of the people suddenly spoke. Is the path ready? The person asked. Yes, it should be, but I will do one final check, another person responded. Stuart could feel Trisha tense up after that comment, and the worker realized why. They had removed two blockades, and the group was about to discover that, which would be disastrous. They had to do something, but what? There was no saying that the group was complete or others had yet to arrive. They had to at least wait for the one that just left to return. Still, there was no way for the officers to communicate with each other without the people hearing it. It was a real predicament. Stewart's mind raced as he tried to think of a way out, but then the group's conversation caught his attention. They discussed their plan and talked about which jewelry stores and banks were their best options. Stewart's heart pounded in his chest as he realized these were some bad people. Sweat broke out, and he tried his best to remain calm, but slowly, panic took control of his body. Trisha gestured for him to stay quiet. I will take care of this. Trust me, she whispered very softly. Stuart nodded anxiously and tried to remain silent so they could hear the people's conversation. Clearly, these people were planning some criminal activities as they continued their conversation about jewelry stores and banks. But then suddenly, one of them exclaimed that they had to be complete before going over the final plan. Just wait a moment for Roger to return. And that was everything Trisha needed to hear. The conversation then quickly changed to everyday subjects until the man Stuart and Trisha presumed was Roger Kane with a panicked look on his face. There's something wrong. One blockade has been destroyed and another has been moved. The criminals stood up from their seats and moved toward Roger for an explanation. And then, when the group of criminals gathered at the same spot, Stuart was startled by Trisha's voice. Now, she yelled as she suddenly came out of her hiding place and gestured for her other officers to follow. They quickly appeared beside her, and together, they approached the criminals, demanding them to remain calm and surrender. Stuart stared at the scene with wide eyes. He was very nervous as the criminals were with double the amount of people as the officers. But the officers were well equipped and had the element of surprise on their side. The criminals quickly realized the best thing to do was surrender. All except for one. The man called Roger was probably already on edge when he noticed the blockades had been tampered with and reacted very quickly when the officers appeared. He ran into a pipe Stewart knew would lead to the exit of the sewers. But when Trisha and Stuart went to follow, they were in for a surprise. Stuart guided Trisha toward the exit, but when they arrived, 
they saw it was barricaded off by a police unit arresting Roger. They had set up around the sewers when Trisha signaled for backup. Every criminal was arrested and soon sentenced to prison, but the story would be nationwide news. Because after the arrests were made, the police finished the investigation and figured out exactly what the criminals were planning, and the media closely followed the trial. The group was planning to rob multiple jewelry stores and banks across the city at the same time by using the sewer system. The criminals created a clear path through the sewage system by blocking off certain pipes, for which they used inflatable repairing devices they had stolen from one of the sewage companies. They could use that path to move quickly and unseen through the city while stealing from the jewelry stores and banks above the sewer system. Luckily, the criminals' plans were thwarted by Stewart and the police officers who were first responders to the call. Through their teamwork and instinct that something huge was at play, they managed to ensure the city's safety. And for that achievement, the mayor's office awarded them a Medal of Honor. <laughs>